All right. Very nice to see you all. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe. And for the next 15, 20 minutes or so, going to be talking about working with adjustment layers and Photoshop files, PSD files natively in Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and switch my screen over. We'll bounce into a Premiere project, which I've shown here uh, before. So this is an edit actually that I made using Adobe stock content for a buddy of mine who's uh, doing this adventure camp in, in Alaska. A very common, you know, for anyone who's ever used adjustment layers, here's the key. If you've used them in Photoshop, if you've used them in After Effects, you know what to do and how they work in Premiere. The concept is the same. Adding it to the timeline is a little bit different, but beyond that, it's very simple. So a common reason for using adjustment layers might be, for instance, to apply an overall look or an overall grade to everything after you've individually corrected or tweaked or manipulated um, individual clips. What do I use to put in my hair? Just Pantene Pro-V and that's it, air dry. So how do we get to an adjustment layer? All right, so let's go over to our project panel here and down at the bottom, you know, you've got this whole series of new items on our, on our buttons here. Let's go ahead and click on this and you'll see the third item down there is adjustment layer. So go ahead and choose adjustment layer. Now, based on the uh, sequence that you're working in when you select that, it's going to give you the particular width and height dimensions for that sequence. So in this case, I'm working in 1080p. Do I want my adjustment layer to be 1080p? Yes. Can I make this a 4K adjustment layer? Absolutely. So this can be modified. You can change this. Uh, the dimensions to be anything. And you'll see why, in just a couple minutes, why that's actually a, co a cool thing to do. Um, additionally, you can also manipulate frame rate if need be. This happens to be a 2997 timeline. And then of course your pixel aspect ratio, we're working in square pixels. So we're just gonna use all the defaults. It already knows. So once again, that's one of the brilliant things is that it knows what you're dealing with. It knows what you're working with. So it creates the adjustment layer for that specific sequence timeline size. Easy. Click OK. And that's going to place it uh, in this case, because I selected it while I was in this Adobe stock uh, bin, it placed it here. Now, we could just move this over to my main project panel. I was just keeping this one open because it's prettier with all the with all the thumbnails. That's, that's really it. <laughs> all right. So once we've done that, um, and you see it's just called adjustment layer. Now, of course, we can rename this uh, if we so desire. Let's go ahead and drag this down into the timeline. We'll place this over, uh, let's say, track four up at the top here. I'll make this one a little bit bigger expand it out. Now, if I want this to go for the entire duration, again, all I have to do is simply click the edge here and drag this out to fit the entire duration of the video, all right? And at this point now, I can begin doing whatever I like. So if I were going to be, say, doing some, you know, again, overall look or color correction, the adjustment layer is gonna function just as it does, again, in After Effects and Photoshop. So if we were applying levels or a hue sat change, again, to affect all of the layers underneath, all of the tracks underneath, the exact same concept applies. So for this, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go into our color workspace and let's do a little Lumetri. So we could come into something like here and again, and uh, start messing about with the contrast. Again, and this is on the adjustment layer, okay? So these non-destructive changes are happening on the adjustment layer. Or I could go down to one of the looks down here, and I really wanna bring out more of the sort of green, earthy tones, you know, with a sort of faded film kind of look. This is using one of the uh, film stock emulations, which I really happen to love. Maybe we'll drop those highlights a little bit, maybe do a little bit more intensity on that look even add a little bit more vibrance to this, okay? And you can see that now that's been applied. Now, if I were to go to my effects controls, here we've got the Lumetri, let me twirl these other things up here. Here we've got Lumetri color applied, but again, that's applied to the adjustment layer, non-destructively. So just as with all things in Premiere, let's say if I wanna go ahead and play this back, I can enable or disable, and you see I'm just turning on or off Lumetri here, on the adjustment layer, and we're getting beautiful real-time performance. This is that um, this is that feature known as uninterrupted playback. I showcased this at Max this past uh, November in San Diego. This is really useful. And again, now you can see how this is going to affect all of the clips. And it actually, it's doing a really nice job. This film stock emulation. Look, it's bringing out some nice detail uh, there in the mist that we didn't actually quite see before on this. So you get the idea. Doing this kind of overall look, overall grade after you've individually treated. This, this particular clip, it looks really nice. So here it is, 
sort of treated with that look. Let's turn off the Lumetri here. And again, it's still nice, but you know, very high contrast. We're losing kind of a lot of the shadow detail. That's one of the reasons why I love those um, Fuji and Kodak uh, film LUTs is that they really just, they give you this kind of analog warmth that sometimes can be missing from, you know, digital acquisition, whether it's via GoPro or even some really high-end digital cameras. You know, it just depends, right? So you could do some wonderful things with this. Now, having said that, let's go back to our editing workspace. Sometimes you want to do this overall grade, but a lot of times, and I've seen a lot of people do this, um, you'll often see people applying adjustment layers over individual instances of a clip, right? So maybe you've already done some color treatments or some effects processing or vice versa. Maybe you've done a, a color, you know, effects processing on the clip itself, but you want to do color treatments on an adjustment layer just for that instance of the clip or for every subsequent layer underneath it, but just in this one period of time. So let's go over to this little place here. And this is where you can sort of leverage nesting as well. So I could take the same adjustment layer that we, uh, that we created. Again, this is not, this adjustment layer is just kind of a blank. Think of this as a, it's, it's, just, it's just a blank adjustment layer. There's nothing tied to it. If I drag this over here, this doesn't automatically have all those same effects applied. It's basically just your container, which you can now drop and drag and do anything over top of. So again, I can adjust the length or duration. You could also just have that adjustment layer up here. Let's say you wanted it to only affect, you know, midway through the clip, you want to apply some weird transition, or maybe you're going to do something with some kind of a blend mode if you've got multiple clips here. This also, you can use blend modes on here in lieu of having to sort of duplicate the clips like you would have done in the past. This is very flexible. Now I want this to go for the entire duration. But one of the things I wanted to show you here is that, again, this functions just like any other regular clip, which means, of course, that you have the ability to change scale, position, opacity. Again, I mentioned using uh, blend modes, motion. So all of that can be applied. So let's say that for this particular clip in the scene, I wanted to use one of these preset looks. So we've got this, um, you can't see it down here. So here, this is one of my presets, Lumetri presets for um, Cinespace. Let's see here, can you see it there? There you go, Cinespace 100. I want to apply this look to this adjustment layer. So once again, I've got it selected. I can simply double click on Cinespace 100 and it applies that. Now let's say you see this on Vimeo a lot. I do this myself actually in tutorial videos and, and sometimes you do it for effect. Let's say that we want to just have a portion of this affected by that adjustment layer. Well, as I just mentioned, you have the ability to adjust position, opacity scale. So we could move the whole thing over Oh, whoops. Well, that's that's fine. We could do a top to bottom or we could do a, you know, a side by side. So I'm just adjusting the position here, right? So again, if I play this clip back on the left, you've got color corrected via the uh, Cinespace LUT, which is a little too intense. And on the right, or sorry. <laughs> yes, I do know my right from my left. On the left, we have the untreated. On the right, we have the treated, okay? Very simple, that's, you know, that's nothing, nothing major, no rocket science there. Again, scale, same thing. So if I wanted to scale this down, so you've got this kind of window. Sometimes I do this just to um, audition what a particular look is going to be like affecting a clip. You can see that I've now just rescaled the adjustment layer to let me see kind of the center of that clip to see what that's gonna look like with that particular LUT, which at that point would allow me to go into something like basic corrections and start um, you know, lifting some of the shadows there, because again, we're losing a lot of the shadow detail. That already looks better. Maybe drop some of the highlights. Uh, maybe, okay, just a little bit like that. And again, kind of fine tune that look a bit before I apply it, okay? And then once I've done that, if we go back to our edit over here, now I can take that sequence, all right? And I can nest it inside of this other sequence here, all right, turn that on, okay, and there it is. And now it has the original Cinespace LUT applied as well as the Fuji film stock over top of it. So adjustment layers, add them to anything, adjust duration, place them on a single clip, nest into another sequence, place it over top of the entire sequence to do a global color correction or great or any effect. I'm just using color. This could be anything. You could apply, 
you know, a blur. You could apply whatever it is that you want here. Again, the concept of adjustment layers carries over from Photoshop, carries over from, from After Effects, and you can use them here, okay? Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you and talk about, I, I mentioned in the title here, is working with Photoshop files. Now, most people know that Premiere Pro naturally, of course, supports Photoshop files. What a lot of people don't realize is that um, not only can you are you working with them natively, which means that the properties of the Photoshop files, you don't have to compromise, you never have to flatten. So if I wanted to create some kind of a title or whatever it is that I'm doing in Photoshop, some kind of backing plate or whatever, from within Premiere, directly from the Premiere Pro UI, I can go up to File, New, and you'll see uh, towards the middle here, New Photoshop File. Now, just like that adjustment layer, it's gonna ask you all the attributes, we will keep them the same. We want them to be consistent, click OK, if Photoshop isn't running, oh, it's going to ask us to give it a name, so we'll call this a AKA, all right. Click Save there. Photoshop will launch if it isn't already running. And now we have, essentially, our blank canvas to work from. So just very simply, no need to, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a designer, mentioned that many times. <laughs> this is so awesome. Of course, and I would do it in white. I think I also had a mistype there, that's okay. Let's make that uh, 110, it's in Adobe Clean, let's change the color, and uh, actually white is probably okay, because we're going to be going on a, on a white background, I mean a, on a colorful background there. Uh, and let's do, let's do a Typekit font instead, I'm going to use Futura, because I love Futura, and let's even go 180 on this, alright, this is so awesome, alright. Looks like I typed it correctly. Okay, save. Okay, now I can close this in Photoshop if I want, or again, if I just go back to Premiere, now you can see in the project panel, it created that PSD for us. And if I go ahead and drag this over, all right, did I save that? Save, it's saved, okay. There it is. Why am I not seeing, why am I not seeing my Photoshop file? Let's see, scale to frame size. Interesting, I'm not seeing anything. That's weird. Okay, well, let's come back to that in one second. <laughs> Let me open up another. Let's see if I'm having a little Photoshop issue right now. Okay, so we'll come back to that in one second. Just hold on, you have to believe. So I'm gonna import a couple of Photoshop files first just to kind of show you a cool workflow here, all right? And some of the options that you have when you import. So first and foremost, you have a, a multi-layered Photoshop file here. Now, I can see that there's lots of different layers in here. Now, I can bring this in all merged together, but perhaps I want to select what layers I want enabled or disabled. So for that, I'm going to go to Merged Layers, and I want, this is a lower third graphic. So I want the title of the graphic, I want, I've got like a gradient on there for the lower third, and then there's a guide. I don't want this, but I want this to come in as one sort of merged file, which by the way, I will always be able to edit, always. So let's go ahead and click OK on this. All right, it brings that in. Let's go ahead and drag this down into my timeline. Okay, and there it is. So you can see, there's my Photoshop file playing over top of my video with my lower third. Now, like before, if I were to go edit original, or in this case, edit in Adobe Photoshop, it'll take that file, open it for me, and now here are all the layers and everything in that Photoshop file. So anything that I were to do to this, and let me see what's happening. This will, this will, let's see if this will bring me back to what I was trying to show before. I think maybe something just got stuck. I don't know. Here, let's see. Oh no, that's a different title. Let's do this one. That's my text. Okay, Jason Adam. My middle name is actually Adam, okay? So Jason Adam Levine, okay, let's go ahead and save. <laughs> and close, and back to Premiere. There it is, redeemed. Okay, I don't know what was happening there. We had a little, little glitchy before. It updates immediately, all right? Cool, awesome. But what if I had a drop shadow, all right? What if, what if I uh, had some animation? What? Motion. Because you know, you can also animate in Photoshop. If you've ever done that, it's pretty cool and it's awesome and it actually has fractional playback, so the performance these days is much better. 
you know, I would probably go to After Effects before I did that, but again, that's me. So you can animate stuff in Photoshop. And in fact, I had someone create an animated lower third for me that I just wanna bring in Premiere Pro. So you can also import Photoshop files with animation and they work as well. And this is using all the basic animation properties, position, opacity, rotation, and scale. So here I have the same lower third. Let's go ahead and open this, but this one actually has animation on it. Once again, I'm gonna choose merged layers. And you can see you've got a couple options here. You can bring them in as individual layers as well. So you can have each element of the Photoshop file as its own layer with whatever subsequent, let's say that it's a, a layer set up to 10 levels deep, that can exist as its own layer, as its own clip in the timeline. So you have total flexibility with how you animate and control those Photoshop layers in Premiere Pro. Let's turn off the guide. Let's only use the mid left and the title. Click OK on this. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything here. Let's go ahead and drag this down. All right, wind it back. Oh, and did you see it there? Check it out. Do you see what's happening there? Do you see the animated text? I've seen a lot of love. Yeah. Friends, how freaking awesome is that? What? 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 Because I'm not a designer. Frankly, even animating that. <laughs> I mean, I did that, but like I get anxiety just from doing simple, like lower thirds give me incredible anxiety. They really do. I love, this is our standard one at Adobe with the gradient, uh, the gradient rectangle. Just making that, I always stress over the height, because I'm not a designer. So your designer can make this, actually do the animation for you, and you can just drop that into Premiere Pro. And just as with before, if I were to say edit original on this, it takes me back in, into Photoshop and oh, look there. Now hold on, let me just turn off my camera for a sec so I'm not in the way. Here's the animation. Oh, here, I'll uh, grab this down here so you can see. All right, so you're actually seeing this now. There's the opacity change. The opacity change was on the gradient here. So you can see it right here. There's my two keyframes for the opacity on the rectangular gradient right there. Okay, and if we scroll up to my text, you can see that I've got under transform, which in this case is our position. Uh, we've got two keyframes, including um, a hold. So again, if you right click, you've got linear, oh, I don't know if you can see that down there. Uh, linear interpolation or hold interpolation. I've got it set to hold, wind back, play back, vroom. little animation in Photoshop. I can change the text. Again, if I'm using typekit fonts, the same typekit fonts are, 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 are supported in Premiere. If you've got a typekit font, and you go to Premiere and you don't have it, it'll automatically ask, would you like me to go to Typekit and synchronize the right font for you if you're a CC member? Any changes that you make here, back to Premiere Pro and you're back in business. So my friends, that's been 23 minutes. What have we learned today? We learned how to take an adjustment layer using the same concept that we know from Photoshop and After Effects and bring that directly into the Premiere Pro timeline. Apply Lumetri effects, apply different types of effects. We can rescale, we can add blend modes. All the things that we know from Photoshop and After Effects on those adjustment layers can be applied in Premiere. And then I showed you how directly in Premiere you can create a Photoshop file which automatically takes all of the attributes, frame size, frame rate, pixel aspect ratio, all the things that again would, can, can get in the way. If you're not thinking about it, ah, I need a Photoshop file, new. And you were working previously, you know, on an A4 page, Ugh, I don't want that, right? So this takes the pain away from that. It does it automatically. It knows the settings you need. Or you can import Photoshop files, layer styles, layer sets, animation. These properties are all supported natively because we are Adobe. It's native. And then you can always use the standard Adobe Edit Original to go back to Photoshop, make changes. And as you saw before, I was redeemed. Whatever change you make inside of Photoshop automatically updates back inside of Premiere Pro. Super cool workflow. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, we will see you again next time. Thanks everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.